Hello my violence loving buddies, this is Depassion, also known as Mikhail, and welcome to another No More Side Jobs segment. Today I'm going to talk about uh, something that's... It popped in my skull, something that popped in my skull during the... A uh, Cole Walsh little rampage, right? The infiltration segment. The infamous infiltration segment, at least to me, because... God damn, I cannot beat that. It's so, so tricky for me to beat. I don't know why. I guess I'm just hella, hella impatient when it comes to that part of the game. Just, yeah, it just tells you to slow the hell down and just carefully uh, stroll through. And uh, it's a very different, it's a very different uh, gameplay experience. So it actually reminded me a lot of Travis Strikes Again and how it kind of asked you to do very different things. Uh, we'll just navigate through the game in different ways and just have very different abilities and just, I don't know, just Travis Strikes again as a whole. It just, gameplay-wise, asked a lot of different things from you compared to the yeah, the original series, No More Heroes 1 and 2. And, yeah, it just reminded me of my time when I used to play Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops and Portable Ops Plus on my PSP. Those were honestly wonderful days, like... Uh, that was uh, my first online portable gaming experience, and man, something about it, it just made me feel like I wouldn't have it any other way, and actually only recently looking back on it, I found out that people are like, oh yeah, it's just a, it's just a glorified chat room game apparently, and I just never got that impression, like I just popped into the chat rooms, found them boring, and I'm like, screw it, I've got better shit to do, because uh, it's also my first time playing a video game and you actually had different lobbies you can pick and choose to go into. Like, they're just a list sitting in front of you. It's amazing. That's just the online experience. Just playing a stealth action game for me at the time was... It was unheard of for me. Like, I just never played that kind of game before. And what was really cool for me was I was aware of... Metal Gear Solid 3, I was just only lightly aware of it, and I was one well, of those many people who had not been in the series for, in into the series at all, that was just like, oh, okay, so there's this snake, there's this one snake character, and you follow him through all four of these uh, Metal Gear Solid games, and no, yeah, you really don't, um, instead it's, yeah, it's Naked Snake, that you follow in Metal Gear Solid 3, and I just found it so interesting, and just looking into it a bit more, that later on it's like, oh yeah, uh, Naked Snake, later on he becomes a villain, and when it was outright said, like, yep, Portable Ops is the start of that journey of him becoming a villain, I was just like, oh, that's pretty interesting, let's, let's check this out, let's check out his transition and stuff, and essentially a lot of fans that rule it out as a spin-off game, I learned way later on, but regardless, I had a lot of fun playing it, mainly for the fact that you had to carefully choose which soldiers you were going to deploy and which ones you were going to keep and how you're going to improve your, essentially your mobile base. You just got a base that's somehow situated all inside of a truck. Um, or a fair amount of it and then they just set up camp somewhere nearby or something. And I found that to be super cool. You just procure on site everything that you need. Like your weapons, ammo, like calf G's and grenades and or chaff, chaff? Chaff G's or Chaff G's? I keep forgetting how to pronounce it. And all sorts of uh, medical kits and rations, all sorts. I found it to be super cool. I found it to be so interesting. And the coolest part for me was that the, the different soldiers you got a hold of all had different stats. I found that to be such a cool thing. And different names. And you could rename them. Obviously, there are some things you just couldn't name them. They just. I um, actually learned way later there's actually a censorship system I like, put in place when I. Actually bought my peer, bought myself a PSP again after so many years of just missing it. And um, oh my goodness, I had back in the day like I was playing Portable Ops Plus like along Portable Ops and Portable Ops Plus alongside uh, No More Heroes 2, and it's just so much fun just having that a completely different gaming experience, right down to literally the the, the console that you actually had to end up holding, not just hold the controller. I found that so cool if I, it felt like a really wonderful time to be in gaming and into gaming in general um because more often than not i would be chilling downstairs just next to the wi-fi just playing online matches 
Um, I, was a, I was a shitty, salty kid at the time, so I'd be just yelling and raging and whinging about how someone's beating me in an online game, and no one else gets it, and like, oh, it's just a game, and I'd be... <laughs> That's what my, my brother or my mum would tell me, and I'd be just like, <laughs> no, it's more than that, and that sort of thing, because... Looking back, I can understand that meant a lot, but Jesus Christ, I, didn't, I did not have to get that upset. <laughs> oh God, it's so embarrassing. It's, oh God, when you just look back and you just realise how like dumb you used to be. It's, ew, ew, it's gross. <laughs> but uh, the, I think the most wonderful part of playing Portable Ops was you genuinely get, I feel like I actually get attached to my characters and like what, what they've gone through just to complete missions and stuff. And especially when it came to Portable Ops Plus and is more optimized for online play. And I even had more skills and abilities that were built towards, yep, it's, this is specifically to build up your army. You got, uh, uh, there's one special ability, one skill, uh, I think it's a trait, I think that's what they call it. And, and it, uh, and it, and it's a headhunter. So, when you look in first person view, you would, uh, see what special, you see what skills that certain enemy, like, specializes in. And I was like, what? so useful that's gonna be amazing and just going through infinity mission or infinite mission just over and over again and there's all these different like rearrangement rearrangements of uh, different stages essentially procedurally generated stages i think anyway um at least when it came to the layout of where soldiers would go i just found it to be so cool i was just like this is actually madness how cool this is because i never experienced a game like that before and you can go through it several times and it'll chop and change. I've never had that before. So it's just amazing to finally have that kind of experience. And yeah, just training up my soldiers, just getting ready to go online. And there are two different game modes. I remember there was real combat when when your soldier dies, you actually lose that soldier. And whoever killed your soldier, they, they gain that soldier. And I was just like, that is actually terrifying. That's really scary. I think it was virtual mission or something like that i can't quite remember the name but i found it be so cool that you got that kind of option i was just like this is madness this is i'm obviously just gonna play it safe because like my soldiers a lot because i've spent a lot of time with them i don't want to whisk, uh, risk and wager that plus um yeah they, they're even hackers in those kind of games man that really surprised me especially um because I end up gaining a soldier because you can trade. You can do um, that's this little trade system. You just go on the wi you just go on your Wi-Fi, a hotspot, and you just send out, and you just trade, and you just end up trading soldiers back and forth. And my best soldier was a major called Minus, and he had S in everything, but uh, I think it was in engineering and medical, and just S in all that stuff. And I think he was fast at sneaking. And he was an athlete as well, so he was really, so he, was really, he could just run really fast. And that was my best soldier, and I accidentally traded him out. And I was like, fuck, someone else is going to get probably my best soldier that I randomly picked up. That's so annoying. <laughs> and there are just so many different soldiers you can end up getting. You can get a genome soldier, and then you can change the color of them when you get this item called the Heart of J. And it was just super cool to get hold of that. And essentially, you're just making a group of Power Rangers. They just got that different brightly coloured outfits. It's, it feels pretty cool. Plus they had emotes in there as well. I'm, I only just realised that that's how far ahead of the curve um, Konami, back when we actually liked Konami, um, how far ahead they were. Because it's just so cool. You could just hop online and after be after killing someone in the game, you, you could then just taunt on top of their body in just the most elaborate way. and you just And you earn more of them, I think, through gaining different types of soldiers and that stuff offline and through Wi-Fi hotspots and that sort of thing. And it's so cool to do. It was just <laughs> it's so cool to gain soldiers and yeah it's cool to 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 show, to show how how uh, big your dick was by just just dancing on top of someone's dead body in a video game. Like yeah yeah that always always makes me always makes me feel like a big man. And it's so much fun, just that game in general, because you had all kinds of different guns, you had all kinds of different stages to go through, all kinds of different strategies to figure out, like where the best places were. There are some parts of the stage that are literally just boxed off for good reason, because 
would be just su such an awful uh, place just to keep hold of. It get this to a point that like you just can't really play the game if you just if the whole squad is just stored up there. Just ta-da! You can't play anymore. And there are some stages that you can only access through the online as well. So that's when it got really, really madly cool when you can go one v one. Sometimes you can just have uh, matches as 1v1. You have the whole stage to yourself, and you can only experience it when you're online. There's no other way. You can't just play the offline mode. You can't just play in Infinite Mission and just play it safe like that. Nope. You, uh, I think there's like Kill House. There's Kill House uh, stages like A, B, and C. And those are amazing. And there's even one stage when you can fight in the Rex hangar, and you could fight on top of Metal Gear Rex. Like, that was insane. That was insanely cool. And what some people would do, they would deliberately have CQC fights. So that you just completely free hands. They'll just be boxing each other. Some people would say, no, no throws. No throws either. And it was amazing. And you could even host games as well. So, and yeah, there will obviously be those people that just absolutely hate a certain type of weapons. They just ban it outright. I was one of those people. I think I got really fed up with uh, rocket launches at one point. Because you can shoot a rocket launcher out. And when you hit with a rocket launcher, you just flip and fall onto the floor. So then someone could just run over. I think people could. I think you could do this by yourself, but it ends up happening a lot, a fair bit in pairs. One person would shoot the rocket, the other one would just have their sniper rifle ready and just shoot you in the skull while you're just laying on the ground. Because there didn't seem to be any iframes um, for that amount of time when you're just literally laying flat on the ground. And oh, man, that's so, that so frustrating. That's so frustrating. But uh, yeah, it was really a fantastic time. There's so many different soldiers I got hold of. There's one, there's one ironically I called Chameleon. It's a genome soldier. He's bright yellow, but he's my best sniper. So once I got hold of this stealth camo item, he always had it. He always had it. I'd have him just run away in bright red off to some far distant point somewhere, but I'd keep him moving around. I'll pop stealth on when I get fairly close to where I want to be, and then just perch whip out the sniper rifle, fire away like a couple of rounds and then just try and move off somewhere else because I'm very bad, I have very crap aim and I'd rather spook someone out of a spot than just waste all my ammo and battery because god damn I cannot do that right, it's awful. So bad at it, so bad at sniping. Um, who else did I have? Oh, there's so many of them. Oh, there's Bush, Um, I think it's Bush, uh, Bush Wallaby. Bush Wallaby was an absolute beast. Absolute beast. I think he's one of those Navy SEAL soldiers uh, in, that you see in Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, this, it, it's just amazing. It's just amazing, that dude. Like, that dude, for some reason, it felt like he could do everything. He didn't have the stats to, to prove it, but more often than not, I could pair him up with a shotgun and things just kind of work out okay. Give him an assault rifle, he's a god. Give him a pistol, then all of a sudden you find yourself in a lot more CQC moments. It was just amazing. It was just a fantastic time, and how you can even you can even have team matches, get free for alls, just all the stuff that we are know. I guess we sort of take for granted now, but at the time, I, that literally blew my mind. That I can play an online game, an online third-person like shooter stealth game, and all, and most of those mechanics can actually still be useful. When it came to leaning around a corner and looking around the corner, like. Not as useful, not as useful, obviously, for good reason, because you're sticking your goddamn head out, but quite a lot of his mechanics were still useful, because he still had the Soliton radar, so you could still hear people coming, or hear people coming, um, like, through the use of the radar. It's just incredible, it's so much fun, and it's such a damn shame that thing's been taken offline. The only way you can play it now, nowadays, if, if you and someone else both have a PS3, and this uh, certain kind of software as well available. And that's the only le um, sort of legitimate way around. There's other ways around as well. Uh, there's, you can just play online with people who have emulators instead, but it just doesn't feel the same. It obviously doesn't feel the same. Um, I just oh, I miss it so much. Just being able to play an online game, just strategy and stealth and you're sneaking around and trying to get the drop on each other and stuff like that that game for me it taught me a lot about just flanking being patient and map knowledge i know it sounds kind of lame because it's it's portable ops plus like whatever like who, who remembers that game right but to me like when i just solely look at it when it comes to the online aspect and 
how just training up soldiers that you gain like through the offline mode and stuff. It's just so much fun. It's so cool. It's, it's a wonderful time. I, honestly, I think that's part of the reason why just that kind of joy and thrill of gaming. I think that's why this like my my channel even exists. I got that journey to the Switch banner like on on the top of my channel for a good reason. That's Originally, it was to be this channel was supposed to be like just focusing purely on Nintendo Switch games and nothing else, but I know just gradually it just turned into like, well, you know what, maybe just a Switch in perspective and that sort of thing as well. And gaming for me did a lot of that. It did a, did a hell of a lot of that, man. It's fantastic stuff. But yeah, Paul Blops got me, got me a bit, got me a bit more patient. <laughs> When it comes to when it comes to playing online games, and I think it's helped me mature a tad as well, I guess, because of the the story mode in Portable Ops, anyway. Because it is just like, oh yeah, this is this is how crazy the world is right now. I'm like, oh what nukes? The whole world's in danger, and it's actually like, and it's actually a serious tone and stuff. I'm like, god damn, that's actually incredible. I didn't think I'd be that into a game that I'd, I'd really be just like, oh shit. Like a bit of my brain is just like, wow, this kind of thing could kind of happen in the real world. That is pretty scary. Not to the point of like, yeah, there's actually a like a floating nuclear platform with a telepathic, uh, with a telepathic and telekinetic lady in there. No, no, not to that level. But I don't know, just guess you're thinking about stuff. Guess you're thinking about governments and that sort of thing. I'm, I'm not gonna go into like some tinfoil hat tangent or whatever, but it it got me to actually kind of just like glance at it for a second and be like, yeah, war is actually like a really messed up thing. And uh, yeah, sure, it's a spin-off game, but it got me to pay attention to the Metal Gear Solid series in general anyway. So it's, it's like, I don't know, for those kind of people that just rule out the game entirely as complete trash, like... Every game has its weaknesses. And hell, some, and hell there's some games that like even I absolutely hate and want to outrule when it comes to canon as well. Like, I actually want to honestly outrule Portable Ops when it comes to canon. Because it makes uh, it makes the boss's death like completely um, like complete completely orchestrated for no real good reason. Honestly, like that was awful when um when I checked when I checked out the whole timeline and just how Portable Ops just doesn't work. When I actually went through the whole series like via cutscenes and that sort of thing, I, I clip showed it. I'm sorry, I clip showed it. Right, I couldn't, I couldn't get through all those games. So I was, Plenty of other things going on. Plus, I do wish I got into the series like when it was all on release. That would be a beautiful time. Um, but yeah, once I learned about that, I was just like, nope, I can't accept Portable Ops' story. I can't accept the story for like what it's done to the what it potentially can do for the rest of the series. I was just like, nope, doesn't count for me. I gave some like makes me sound like some ignorant uh, fanboy. It's just like, nope, not in my head canon, but it was a. It's like I think it's factually it was is it is a spin-off game because Hideo Ko Hideo Kojima wasn't directly behind it when it comes to the story and stuff. So I think that works. I think that works. I think I'm allowed. Um, but what I was gonna say there's something else. That was it when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to games and just potentially absolutely ruining the canon of a of, a, of an entire series for me. My uh, my friend Matt knows knows about this game thoroughly. Like, just every time he mentions it, just to joke with me, just like, "Oh yeah, this was a good game." He knows it pisses me off. Like, just it's like at the flip of a switch. I'm just like, "Nope, you know it is bad." And the game is Metroid Other M. Um, for many several wonderful lines, such as, "Oh yeah, it's my first time working with the Galactic Federation." Oh, okay, apparently the entire Metroid Prime series just doesn't count anymore, according to this goddamn game. And um. Yeah, the fact that we fight as a badass bounty hunter, she finally is able to speak, and we finally get to know the person behind the suit, and all of a sudden we got, like, was it Captain Adam, and she agrees to stick to, like, his rules of being like, yep, your weapons are too dangerous for my crew, so you're gonna use them in certain points and places, and it's that freaking goddamn lava level scene, when she's boiling alive in her own goddamn suit. She is about to die, and and when you walk up a certain part of the spiral, then the cutscene goes off. As well as the health being at a certain level, like being burned down to a certain level, then it's like, yeah, you can activate your uh, 
Yvaria, like, uh, shielding or whatever. I'm like, you freaking joking. Like, she was willing just to wait. Like, that was, that was honestly awful. I'm like, you actually crazy. That, that ticked me off so much. Because I went through all three of the games. I'm like, oh my god, another game. It's just being so hyped for just... For such a wonderful moment. Just being like, yep. Yeah, Samus is going to speak. And she speaks a lot. And... It just... Oh, it, it really hurt the character for me, man. It really hurt the character. Like, I cannot... Uh, I think it's almost like a universal thing, like a lot of a lot of fans of majority. I don't want to say universal because I mean literally everyone. Um, but the majority of people who played through several of the Metroid uh, the Metroid games, not just Prime, just agree that like, yep, uh, Metroid Other M just shouldn't have happened. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's still some cool boss fights. The fact that uh, the fact that we get to see Ridley in a sort of yeah this is a terrifying monster kind of scope i was like okay that looks pretty awesome but relative to the player it seems weird for me at first i was a bit like why is she so terrified of ridley she she's samus has killed him um how many times at that point like at least three or four times i'm like why why would she why are you so scared like you've killed him so many times but then then i thought like well Let's let's go back to the sort of like a uh, piece of material that inspired the Metroid series, Alien, Ridley Scott, and all that jazz, right? Imagine, um, like, genuinely imagine being in 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 Ridley's shoes. Is it Ridley? I'm trying to remember now. I think it's Ridley. Just so. No, 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 it's Ridley. No, Ridley Scott's the director. But I'm trying to remember the lady's name. Ah, can I remember? Can I remember her name? Just a moment, I've got to look this up. got to look this up very carefully. There we go, Ellen Ripley, that was it. So, imagine being in Ellen Ripley's shoes, and there's been like three, four different instances over many years we had to kill a xenomorph. Like... I think it's still a freak and still scary as fuck, man. Like, I don't know. Like, on an emotional level, it kind of makes sense that Samus would be terrified in Metroid Other M, but... I don't know. I guess if... If in the previous games, they somehow... Might, well, especially the 2D games. I don't know how they'll convey it there, but... If they somehow were able to convey, like, yeah, Samus is genuinely terrified of, the, of Ridley, then it'll make a hell of a lot of sense. But... It... Now it, like within the weird bubble of Metroid Other M, it makes sense, and also because it like a it also like rem reminds us that like oh yeah, Ridley Ridley killed Samus's parents, but no, it doesn't it it doesn't work from the player's perspective. To them, it's like initially like you're just like well why why are you so freaking scared? You killed this thing several times, you've literally leapt down and just shot down this thing's throat. Didn't even bat a friggin' eyelid. Like, you're just like, yep, go kill him. Gotta go kill him again. Like, it's a goddamn shame, man. Like, I don't know. It's just. That's, that's the trouble when you have a. With anything. When it when it has a story. With anything when it has a story and it's just been going on for so many years and there's so many different forms of media that can be interpreted into and converted over to. And especially, like, yeah, just forms of entertainment. So, like, different games consoles. It, not, uh, the story, the core of the story will change over time. And, yeah, if, if you got a different person on it, they, they might believe that it can fit in, but not always. Like, it's, it's a damn shame. I really wanted to love Other M. I really wanted to, but, <sighs> there's, there's a lot of stupid decisions there. I'm just like, wow, this, this, uh, I don't want this in the series. <laughs> I hate a fucking lot. Um, actually, switching gears, we're going to go, uh, now I think about it, when it comes to Travis Strikes Again, it's quite polarizing for people, because, uh, I think a lot of people, a lot of people, including me, were like, oh, yo, this is going to be sweet, I'm going to see Travis again, it's going to be amazing, it's going to be like, No My Heroes 1, and all's good bits, and No My Heroes 2, and all's good bits, right? And, yeah, unfortunately, it was, okay, unfortunately, it wasn't, it had a lot of the heart and charm in No More Heroes 1, and 
how it and how in no more eyes too like they kind of shook things up a little bit they just dialed up to like 11 on how they chopped and changed stuff around and that was really freaking cool i'm really glad they did that and just with how many different uh how many different mechanics and components were brought into no more heroes travis strikes again no more heroes it's really a fantastic time i really enjoyed it um but yeah for me my biggest gripe is you can't suplex enemies and you know how much i love suplexes it's actually ridiculous how much i love them and i don't know i found i just love the game that little bit more just because travis is wearing the purple leather jacket and i love this purple leather leather jacket so goddamn much it's actually stupid how much i love that leather jacket it's amazing and the, yeah he's just he's just rocking in the next game and just like oh, <laughs> this is perfect <laughs> Oh man, but it's, it's I, I'll talk about I'll talk a bit more about Travis Strikes again when I get round to the game. I don't want to I don't want to spoil my sort of like initial impressions and that sort of stuff without the actual reference material just on the screen. So I've got a lot more to do when it comes to uh, Desperate Struggles. A lot of things do change up. It's not it's not the same rhythm. So it's, my episodes are going to change like a little bit. Um, but then they'll switch back. They'll switch back. So it'll, it'll feel pretty good. It'll feel just fine. But until then, uh, it's been Depassion, also known as Mikel. See you on the next journey. Take care.